he cut the head of Medusa. So what happened was Daphne was... Welcome yeah, to There's so many pigeons, just watch one of them poop on me. Give me so many darn pigeons. From what I hear so far, it's a coastal city and it's pretty small. People here are pretty laid back. It accounts for only 10% of Turkey's GDP compared to 65% around the Istanbul area. We took a flight to get here from Istanbul, but apparently it's a closer flight to Athens, only 30 minutes away. To Greece. This is for you. Pickles. Pickle juice. Give it a try. Okay, thank you. It's alright. Like it's it you really is like pickles. One? Guys, I thought those were eels, but they're pet leeches. Apparently it's a painkiller. Guess who misses her bananas? Girl. Welcome to our first day here in Kushidasu. It's a very biblically significant place. Right now we're going to visit the House of Virgin Mary, but we're also in general in the city of Ephesus. And this is where, according to the Bible, the Virgin Mary lived for a while and it was also one of the churches or one of the seven ancient churches and where John the Apostle wrote the book of Revelations, which is the book in the Bible that talks about the future and what's to come in this world. My goal is that everything I learn, you can learn too, because there's some really interesting stuff here, historically, religiously, just world knowledge. And turn John and said, this is now your mother. So if we believe that John came here, how can he live alone in Jerusalem? And Jerusalem was not safe. Uh, pagans were persecuting uh, the Christians. One thing you guys might be wondering is why are there so many Catholic Christian like, remnants here in Turkey, which is now a predominantly Muslim country? And the answer is you shouldn't think about it like that. You should think about this place 2,000 years ago, which used to be an ancient Roman city. So I just went inside the house. I wasn't allowed to vlog because it's such a holy place, but I don't know. Right now I'm just so calm, so humbled. There's a wishing wall here. And how it works is first you drink holy water and then you write your wish on a tissue or something and you stick it up on the wall. We're at a souvenir store right now and they're selling holy water. Earnings are donations though. There's holy oil. My brother calls this Holy dirt, but holy land sounds better. Welcome to Ephesus! What a view! I'm sitting on a rock. We are going to be exploring Ephesus for the rest of today. It's already noon, but right now we are at a small theater. A lot of it was rebuilt, but some of it still remains. And I just hiked up here to get the view. Apparently this is the symbol for medicine and that's how they know this was a hospital. Fun fact, this is Nika, who is the goddess of victory. Apparently Nike was named after her. Also, all the floors are marble. It's impressive. That's the iconic uh, library. A wealthy Roman, when they wanted to buy slave, they are on the slave market, that's where they're supposed to come. So this is the Agora, marketplace for slaves uh -huh. as well. Here we are at the famous amphitheater. Fun fact, back then, Romans, to calculate what the population was, they would just multiply the seat capacity of their theater by 10. So this one can seat 25,000, so that means the population back then was 250,000, roughly. Right now 
we are at the Castle and Monument of St. John. It is believed that in the Bible, the Apostle John, not John the Baptist, is buried somewhere here because he built this church and requested to be buried here. Apparently he wrote some of the Book of Revelations here on this hill overlooking this beautiful place. St. John also is the one who wrote the Book of John and part of Revelations. So I don't know for me that was pretty incredible because I have quoted verses from John before and to think that I am breathing or in the same land that he once was is it's crazy. Update, St. John is actually not here, or his body isn't here anymore because they actually moved it to the Vatican, but he used to be here, and that over there was a fort during the Byzantine Empire. Another fun fact is this was the first church to be shaped like a cross, so if you imagine it, this is the long part of the cross going to there, and then here, these are like the wings of the cross. We're here at the temple of Artemis, which is where people used to worship the goddess of fertility, Artemis, but it's kind of sad because there's only one column left. The rest fell during earthquakes. Some of them were museums. Some of them were used to build the Hagia Sophia, which I went to the other day, but this is all that remains. And who knows, in a few years, this might be gone too. Medusa. We have just been road tripping around Turkey all morning because we're heading to a bunch of places, crossing like on long two, four hour car rides. But right now we are in Aphrodisias, which is another ancient city, and people here used to worship Aphrodite, who was the goddess of beauty. Back there, you might have seen a sarcophagus, and the difference between that and a normal coffin is, if you notice the top of the coffin, you'll see a roof structure. And if you actually flip that upside down, it looks like a boat. And that's because back in Greek mythology, people believed that once they died, they would have to cross a river to go to the afterlife. So they built that boat on top of their coffin. Second thing is they would put a coin under their tongue, which people believed they would be able to take on to afterlife with them because to cross the river, you needed to pay a guy in order to get onto the boat that would cross the river. I'm actually a huge uh, fan of Greek mythology. You probably heard me fangirling about the webtoon for Olympus. And I recently bought the Greek mythology book, which I haven't gotten to, but it's always been really fascinating to me. Apparently, these are the different expressions that people would wear on their faces. These were emojis. No tourists at all, and this is supposedly one of the best and most well-preserved Roman Colosseums ever, and there's nobody. I feel like there's so many popular tourist destinations just like this in Europe, but for some reason people don't go to Turkey or they don't know that in Turkey there's so much rich history and artifacts here. This was a swimming pool. Don't know who can swim that much, not me. Gladiators, their names are chiseled there. Oh, these are the celebrities of their time, yeah, the gladiators. A Hollywood's Walk of Fame equivalent. So here we have the Colosseum. Earlier, that was actually just the amphitheater. It's nothing compared to this, which is actually what is huge and so well preserved. This place fits 35,000 people, so population. According to the formula we talked about yesterday, would be around 350,000 people lived here. So they would have chariot races and other competitions here. We currently made it to Pamukkale, which is one of the most popular travel tourist spots here in Turkey. They are known for their travestine terrace pools, their limestone pools, which I don't know, look gorgeous. And you're about to see them. The only sad thing is it's drizzling a bit, hoping it'll clear up. Cleopatra has swam here. We have gone barefoot. Oh, I really don't like barefoot. to catch the sunset. I actually left my bag with my mom so I wasn't able to vlog that much 
but we got a lot of photos. So stay tuned for that on my Instagram at LilkyDX plug plug. Guys, I'm just so in awestruck right now. This is it's beautiful. <laughs>